Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Megan Easley Walsh and this is History Stories. Why history? I'm a researcher with a PhD in history. Why stories? I'm an author, writing consultant, and editor. In short, my life is full of history and stories. With that in mind, this podcast's goal is to explore some of those stories of history. This will include diving into antiques and interesting historical artifacts that I found, looking behind the scenes at inspiration for my novels, taking a peek at places I visited, and uncovering new topics of interest. Thank you for joining me. Let's begin. Hanging in my office in a wooden frame is a fabric band. It's white, blue, and red in stripes, with thick, uneven black stitching around it. A stamp that reads FFI is in the center. What is this object? It's an armband used to identify the French forces of the interior. In other words, it's a badge from the French resistance after the landings in Normandy on D-Day, June 6, 1944. When I saw this badge, I knew I wanted to get it. Why? My first novel, Flight Before Dawn, tells the story of the French resistance in World War II. In it, my characters are introduced in Normandy in the autumn of 1943. Living in occupied France as members of the French resistance, they risk their safety for freedom, and they are emblematic of the many resistance fighters whose groundwork was pivotal for the success of D-Day. So that's the story of why I own this armband from the French Resistance. Now, what is the story behind Flight Before Dawn? How did I decide to write about the French Resistance, World War II, France, and more specifically, Normandy? There's an adage that you should write what you know. Perhaps there's some truth in that as a partial answer to these questions. When I was 10 years old, I had the great honor of helping to raise the American flag over the Lorraine American Cemetery in Saint-Avold, France. Located in northeastern France, near the German border, it is the largest American cemetery from World War II in Europe. Over 10,000 perfectly lined up crosses and stars of David mark the lives and sacrifice of men and some women. That was the first time that I visited Saint-Avold, but it was far from the last. For eight years, I traveled to St. of Old and the Lorraine American Cemetery each Memorial Day weekend with my Girl Scout troop. We placed an American and a French flag on each grave on Saturday. On Sunday, we presented wreaths to the dignitaries during the official service. Today, in 2024, there are increasingly fewer veterans from the Second World War that remain. During my time at St. of Old on those Memorial Days, however, there were still several veterans, several people who were not just participating in history, but living their own stories, their own memories, and their acts of remembrance. Saint-Avold's position in northeastern France testifies to the locations of many of the battles where these soldiers were cut down. Most of those buried in the Lorraine American Cemetery date to the autumn of 1944, when the Allied forces were fighting from Paris to the Rhine River of Germany. Autumn 1944 is one year after the action begins in my novel, Flight Before Dawn. Because, of course, before there was autumn 1944, there was summer 1944. Before they could reach the east of France, they started in the west. They started at Juneau Beach and Swords Beach and Utah Beach and Omaha Beach. They started in Normandy. I visited Normandy when I was 17 years old, and the region felt immediately familiar. I don't think it was only because I had been to other parts of France or because the crosses and stars of David at Normandy American Cemetery Memorial overlooking Omaha Beach so closely resemble those in St. Avold. History pulsed from Normandy. On Utah Beach, I picked up a stone that was streaked with red, and in my writer's mind, that red was symbolic, blood soaked into the sand. But on that day I was there, it was peaceful. Even the waves were tame. 
Where so much destruction had once been, now there was wide sweeping beauty. I later learned that I have ancestors that lived in Normandy for centuries. Maybe there was a whisper of remembrance in that which contributed to the feeling of familiarity. Having lived in Germany from the ages of 9 to 18, so many of my years growing up were American and European combined. Today, that is even more true. I am a dual American and Irish citizen. Standing on the eastern shores of Ireland, it is not so different from the coast of Normandy. The wind and the sand feel the same, but you don't have to take my word for it. Many people are acquainted with Normandy through the movie Saving Private Ryan. Although that story is firmly set in Normandy in the days surrounding June 6, 1944, some of its most iconic scenes were filmed on the beaches of County Wexford in Ireland. Perhaps it is not surprising, then, that when I first decided I was ready to write a novel, I turned to Normandy myself. Standing on the beaches of eastern Ireland, near where I was living at the time, although not in Wexford, my mind carried me to the French shores. To write history means to be able to walk around inside of it. Perhaps all of those days of being near veterans, seeing the bullets still lodged in the buildings and riding along the roads marked with the signs of liberated kilometers on Liberty Road, stretching from Utah Beach all the way through the Lorraine and beyond, filtered into me. All of those times of remembering built inside of me. In those places, the past flickered on the horizon pressing in with its urgency. I often think that a story has to steep inside of you, like tea in a teapot, before it is ready to be written. Perhaps over many years, that story, one of bravery, one of fighting for a free France and a free Europe, had been building inside of me. When the time came, it took flight. I'd like to leave you with this quotation by the author Stephen Ambrose. It seems appropriate to quote Ambrose here, as he was a historical consultant on the movie Saving Private Ryan, in addition to being the author of two of the research books on my shelf that helped me to write Flight Before Dawn. Those books are D-Day, June 6, 1944, The Climatic Battle of World War II, and Citizen Soldiers, the U.S. Army from the Normandy beaches to the bulge to the surrender of Germany. Ambrose said, quote, The past is a source of knowledge, and the future is a source of hope. Love of the past implies faith in the future, end quote. Finding beauty where once there was only loss is part of the fulfillment of faith in the future. And in writing, a means of preserving the lessons, an act of remembrance, there is also a purposeful alchemy. In a world often bent on destruction, art is a radical act of creation. Thank you for joining me for this first episode of History Stories. To find out more about my writing and my research, visit me at meganeasleywelsh.com and you can find my novel Flight Before Dawn on Amazon. I look forward to sharing more history stories with you in the next episode.